Hey guys, this is Forsaken Rihanna here with the third episode of the True First Person Shooter Tutorial Series. In this one, we're going to be looking to setting up a first person, third person camera toggle so that we can have a third person camera for debugging reasons and in case you wanted to have a third person camera toggle for whatever reason. So, for example, you get into a vehicle, you maybe you'd want to switch to third person or maybe you just want first person, third person toggle in your true first person shooter. And this is how we're going to do that. So basically what we're going to have is press zero, which is the button I decided to click. select. You can use any button you want, then it'll go into free looking camera. And you click zero again, and it will lock you back into your first person camera. So without further ado, we will get into setting this up. First thing I'm going to do now is move my test project out of the way here. And I'm just going to close out of these. I have my main project here. And we're going to want to open up our character blueprints on our blueprints and character folder. And first thing I'm going to do is just remove some of this garbage. We don't need our VR or touch inputs. And it's going to select all of these by holding control and clicking them. And I'm going to disable the bubbles over here. I'll name these movement input. I'm just going to make this blue. Okay, and I'm going to search for keyboard zero, I will show you how to set up inputs in your project settings, but for right now I'm just using these for, I'm doing it this way for debug settings specifically, you want to Create this, create a boolean, it's going to check if you're in first person, we're going to set this to true, and you can also click these arrows, save on, or these dots, save on compile, non success only. So if your files are are, there's no errors, then it will save them automatically. That will save a little bit of time. So we're going to create a function called switch camera. And first we're just going to duplicate these cameras right here. So you want to select your spring arm, control select your camera, right click and duplicate and name this TP for third person camera. And TP spring arm for third person spring arm. And I'm going to detach these from the mesh. And I'm going to select my third person camera and scroll down here and turn off auto activate. So the first thing we're going to do in our function now is get our first person. You can hold B and click to create a branch, which is to check if first person is true or false. It's going to check if first person is active. For some reason, I had to double click my bubbles to get them turned off. So if first person is active, we will disable first person if we're running this function. And if it isn't active, we'll enable first person. Cut down a bit there.
So we're going to disable our first person camera. And enable first person camera. Make sure to toggle these off. And from here, we're going to grab our first person camera, grab our third person camera, set act active. And you can control C this and control V set active over here. So the way this is going to work is if our first person camera is enabled, then we will disable the camera and reset it. So we're going to set that it's not in first person anymore. Then we're going to reset the camera and set the third person as a new active camera. Gonna disable the first person and enable the third person. And we can copy this and paste it down here. And tick the tick them the opposite basically. And I want to move this around down a little more for when I comment it. But basically now when we're in first person or we're in third person and we disable it. So we're going to the false, or we're in for we're not in first person. We're going to false. We're going to set first person true. New active camera is going to be first person, and we're going to disable reset our third person camera. So enable first person camera. Disable third person camera. And now we're just going to set our orientation for our camera. So right now, if we were to run this switch camera function, press zero, we have some problems. So the reason we have problems would be We need to set our third person camera to our spring arm endpoint. Set our spring arm location to around like 65. And then set the length to like 600 or so. Now when we click zero. For some reason I needed to do it twice it's because I didn't have my make sure your first person boolean is set to true by default so you're automatic you because we start in first person and now when we click zero whatever your toggle is we'll snap in and out of the camera and if this is how you want it so it doesn't rotate your character we want to be able to rotate it so we can debug so I'm going to Drag out of here and set controller rotation yaw. And we're going to leave this ticked to false because we ticked it true for when we're in first person. Now we need to switch up our orientation right here desired location for our character movements. We want to drag out our character movement, set desired rotation to false since we have it set to true currently. Click right here. And then set orient rotation to movement. 
I'm gonna toggle that one true. That's gonna set the camera rotation settings for third person. And we can paste this down here. Control Z, Control V to paste. And it's gonna rename this to first person. And we're gonna tick everything in over here. So now the control rotation is back on, desire rotation is back on. And orient rotation to movement is turned off. Now when we click play, we'll have this, and when we go in the third person, our camera will be like this. When we toggle back in, first person camera will be stuck through our head again, and we're rotating around normally. I'm going to set that toggle first person, third person camera. I'm just going to make it debug area. I'm going to tick on movement input so you can see that. And that's going to be everything for this one. If you found this video helpful and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new tutorial video uploads. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section below. Or join my community Discord server using the link in the description. I'm sure there's someone there that would be willing to answer your questions if I'm not able to get to you. Thanks, and I'll see you all in the next one.